What is up, everyone? Welcome to Mechs on Deck. It's uh, Wednesday, and we're here joined with the owner, the operator of Cannon Keys, Mr. Upas. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing well. Good to have you back. Second time. Second time. Yeah, yeah, Two second time. Club. Dude, does that mean, what, what questions are you going to ask me now? I don't, I don't know. Well, you know, we might up because we what we like to do is compare, see how things have changed because it's been a minute. Mm, true, true, it's been true. a minute. Uh, so we'll get into why it's been a minute because it was just, it was supposed to be earlier. We'll get into that more though. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, quick shout out before we get uh, started to our awesome sponsors and partners. One of them being Canon Keys. Uh, OmniType, Project Keyboards, as well as Zap Cables, Type Beast, and Smith and & Rune. We'll hear more from them later. But let's, you know, well, I guess I didn't say, how are you doing, Cyrus? I'm good, good, man. Good. It was a good day. It was a busy day at work, which makes the, the time go by much faster. So, yeah, had a, had a good day. What about you? How do, how'd storage and organization day like four it, it's Go. it's over man I, I hit the last thing i needed to which is the laundry room which took like five minutes because if i'm a hoarder of anything it's like grocery bags because i'm always like oh i need them i need them i need them and then i'm like i have like a thousand <laughs> i don't need at no point will i ever be like i need a thousand grocery bags are these like the plastic ones yeah or like the, the paper ones like, or i have the the plastic ones but they, I just, you know, I never get rid of them because they're good for like, you know, mini trash can trash mm -hmm. bags. Like, we, you know, we've got a couple mini trash cans around. So, um, so, oh, excuse me. My apologies. <laughs> anyway, let's get into the, uh, the fast four. We've done, we did one a while back. Let's talk about this one now. Your top four favorite switches. Switches. Okay. Man, this is, this is tough. Um, Get on yellows, still, still up there. Uh, you know, just God tier. Lube them up, <laughs> lube them up. They sound great. You know, put them in any board. You know, people are like, "Oh, Gator on yellows aren't an end game switch." Yeah, when they're lube properly, I would say they're they're end game. So um, that's definitely number one that hasn't changed. Um, I I've recently tried out some navies, and I think they were the navies that Apiary put in one of the obliterated prototype builds. And those are actually pretty nice. Like, uh, I've never been like a super, super tactile fan. Like, um, T1's Holy Pandas, I know like that's, community loves those. And, you know, there's a place for them and I'll, I'll, I'll type on them a lot of the times as well. But um, I've always been like more like a mid tactile person. So uh, those navies, I think are pretty, pretty solid. Um, after that, uh, JWK Lavenders. Um, those. Oh They're so, I cannot so, wait. Okay to build them okay so those. so so hear me out i don't even mind using them stock like if i'm if i'm doing like a hot swap board or something and i'll, I'll just <laughs> toss these lavenders in and they're stock and it i think it still sounds great so uh for me if i have to use a switch stock i'm just gonna pick the factory lube lavenders and, and that's that's gonna be it um fuck yeah yeah <laughs> and you know like, I, I told the <laughs> like, i'm not even gonna lube these i'm gonna spring swap them because it's under 70 grams and that's just unusable but like I just spring swapped them and I, you know, I even test, you know, did a little, you know, just the push test on a, uh, lube on a lube station. I was like, dude, these feel amazing. <laughs> yeah. Look, it's, it's shocking, right? Like who knew that factory lube was, was that okay? I mean, you know, I, a lot of people say, Oh, if you, if you wipe the factory lube up, lube up, lube off and then like lube them with 205 grade zero, it's going to be even better. Yeah, of course it will. Right. But, yeah. um, I think they're, they're totally passable stock. Um, and then for number four, so I've, I've, you know, I've done two linears now and, and a tactile. So I've got to go with the clicky. Uh, box Crystal Pinks, um, my new favorite clicky. Got that click bar, got that, you know, lighter weight. I like it. So, you know, not as, not as thick as the, uh, as the jades and not quite as loud. So, um, you know, you, you could, you could, you could hear from like one room over, not like the whole house. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, <laughs> so, yeah. Clicky Colt. I love it. Yeah, love man. It. Clicky's just, it's still, I'm, I'm waiting for it to come back around one day, one day it'll come back around. Clicky's will, will be the, uh, will be the, the top dog again. One day, one day, 
Maybe not, not, not for long. Maybe, maybe it'll take another, like, <laughs> it'll be like a month. It'll yeah. be like the month. Everybody got back into clickies and then realized their mistake. <laughs> I, I feel like there will have to be like some, some new clicky that comes out and then that could drive like, Oh man, this clicky so good. Or it's like, so, so different. Sort of like, I feel like when the, when the box clickies came out, there was like this clicky resurgence because the click bar thing is better. So anyways, dude, that was like one of the first times that I remember switches like not being in stock. Like it felt like it went up on novel keys and then it was gone in minutes. That was like the very first time that I, with the box navies and jades. Um, but yeah, maybe, maybe one day we'll get back to that. We'll see. Maybe let's get some cream clickies, Mike. Come on. Let's get some box some, cream some clickies. Box cream. Anyone can do it, Mike. Cream can, clickies. So. Yeah. <laughs> Calling you out, Mike. Uh, I have to ask. Uh, we've, we've got a lot of people saying Kobe or we riot. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I'll try to get Kobe to make an appearance later in, during the stream. So right. cool. So he will. He will. I'll, I'll try to make him have an appearance. All right, oh, yeah. there we go. There we go, chat. There we go. go. All Guaranteed, one hundred percent. You heard him. But you, but you got to keep watching the stream if you want to see Kobe. You know, exactly. See, see what there I did there? Yeah. Look at this there guy. Plug. Hey, look at this guy plugging. I dig it. Um, next up in the fast four will be your top four favorite key sets. You got quite a few key behind set. you, so. Man, yeah. Okay. Um, I really like Cat Alpha. I've been daily driving Cat, Cat Alpha for a very long time now. I think ever since like the pandemic started. Um, I have it on my Satisfaction 75, and I it's it's nice, man. Like a lot of the uh, reverse dice subsets in Cat Profile have had like these sort of spacebar sluggishness things that you can kind of fix, but you know it's, it's never quite perfect. But Cat Alpha, you know, straight on dice sub, they did a great job with that. So um, that's that's definitely one of them. Um, moving on from there, and this is tough, man. I, I like so many key sets. It's just, it's just like to pick your top four is, is, is a struggle. Um, the one that's popping into mind right now is also Cat Eternal. Again, I, I've, I've just really been appreciating the, uh, the Cat profile and, uh, that, that one's pretty nice. Um, GMK Moondust. I love how GMK Moondust turned out. Um, just like I, for me, it's like that accent color was really nice. And uh, ever since like day one, when I saw that IC, I was like, oh, I want the set. So, uh, you know, it, it definitely met my expectations, uh, Moondust. And then for number four, um, I, I don't know, man. Like, I feel like I'm in, I, I did a white set and two purple sets. So like, you know, Mizu is always a good one. <laughs> like you got to. Got to do Mizu. I love, you know, I, I love Navy boards and Mizu pairs well with, with Mizu a lot. So never would have guessed you like Mizu. No, <laughs> <laughs> me and every other person in this community. Right? <laughs> yeah. There it is. There it is. So next up, should, should we, should we, should we limit him? Osiris, Eric, should we limit him? Should we From... say no canon keyboards? No canon yeah. keys boards? Yeah. All right. Top four favorite keyboards. And you can't, if, if it has a cannon on it, Okay. And also the Satisfaction 75. <laughs> I, okay, so, I think irons are okay because you, okay. you were just a vendor for them. That's <laughs> okay, so, really a U board. So, so being, a, being a vendor is okay for a board, but, yeah. I, but yeah. not okay. Okay, cool, cool. Um, most recently, uh, the Onyx has been really nice. Um, there was something about it that like, uh, when I... To be honest, when I first saw the renders, I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like FRL, cool layout. You know, it, I wasn't like super excited about it. And I only saw like the first render. This is like early on. But when I got that keyboard, just like the way the it feels in your hands and like, uh, it's kind of like, if you look at the side profile, it kind of like tapers in towards the top. And just in person to me, that was, it, it just like wowed me. Like there was something about that in particular that I really liked. So, um that's definitely one of them right now. Um, so uh, I don't know if this counts. I didn't design it. Um, there's like a O-ring gasket mount open source board called called the Bakken Echo. Uh, that one's that one's pretty nice. Uh, I don't want to say too much about it, but it's not mine. <laughs> it's it's not something I designed. Um, <laughs> So I, I guess that I guess that counts, right? Or, do, or does yeah. it not? We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll count, count it. 
we'll count it. Okay. Okay. Cool. So that's that's another one I've been I've, I've been appreciating recently. Um, in terms of other boards, I uh, just got a Heine TKL one in, and that one turned out real nice. Um, can it be my favorite before I've built it? Because I haven't built it yet, I mean, but I really I really like how it, how it looks, and it has an FR four plate, so it's like I'm, I'm pretty pretty stoked for that one. And then um, again. This is one I'm really excited for that I don't have yet, but it's like that's that still counts, right? You yeah, the type on it for sure. Yeah, yeah, okay. The time eighty, another TKL. I so I don't like TKLs. That's another thing too. Like I'm, I'm on these two of them are on TKLs, right? But two of them are my top four right now. Uh, you know, it's always it's always changing. Uh, the time eighty, is just what they did on the back there is really cool. So uh, I like that. You know, yeah. if you need someone to build your Heine TKL, I think I could think of at least two people. <laughs> uh, just say, just say. Yeah, the uh, we did uh, our our boards uh, Mech Madness bracket last night, and Time Eighty is is going, going. pretty far in our in our back bracket just because the uh, the way it looks, man, and that that back. If they can show off that back, I think they really they made it. To the- go to the finals dude it's so intricate like man that's that's awesome so now if they could just figure out how to turn it into an actual working clock for the for the third round that would be how how fucking hilarious would it be if you had to like you'd like pick your keyboard up and be like (laughs) (laughs) an actual mechanism in it okay all right i got to work for like 30 seconds (laughs) What if your plate flexed enough that like the motion of the plate would wind the, the thing? That would be That'd sick. Be cool. Yeah. That would be some really unnecessary engineering, but would be really cool. <laughs> I wonder how expensive that would be. <laughs> oh, not. All right, let's make it work. <laughs> the, the 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 cannon keys time 80. <laughs> Dude, version three. I love it. Love it. So all right. and Osiris, what what else we got? The last one. I think I remember you being all desserts last time. Um, yep, yep. <laughs> the top four favorite <laughs> foods. Okay, let's let's not do desserts this time. So you know, I I'm a I'm a huge sucker for junk food though. So like, it's gonna be junk food. Uh, love pizza. You know, pizza's great. Um, pizza for dinner. It's great. My 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 preferred toppings are sausage and mushroom. So sausage and mushroom pizza. Hell yeah, dude. Um, dude. Stuff is stuff's real good. Um, let's see what else. Um. Oh, my wife's in the chat saying my cooking better make the rank. Well, it does. So there's there's a Brazilian dish called feijoada. It's like a black bean stew. They put like a whole bunch of meats in it. And um, it takes like hours and hours to cook typically. It's almost like a chili or something except with like huge chunks of meat. But um, but we make it in a pressure cooker, so it's way, way quicker. Like pro tip, you know, use a pressure cooker. Um, and, and that stuff is delicious. Um, let me see. What's what's number what's number three? Number three is probably like Americanized Chinese, like General Tso's chicken. Like again, like you know, really shitty food. Like it's, but sometimes you just you know just hits that spot. And then, and then um, for the last one, I guess I, I like hot pot a lot too. I, I, maybe I'm biased because I had hot pot. I think like last week or the week before, but like just just like. Uh, hot pot in general is is up there right now so yeah there it is well, guys if you don't know who upas is he is the owner of canon keys he is design. he is the designer of the keyboard of the year 2020 winner the satisfaction 75 he's designed multiple pcbs including one of my probably my favorite the ansi uh, I need to get my hands on that round too. I want to ask you about more questions about that in a little mm-hmm. bit. He has uh, really grown to be one of the top three or four vendors in this hobby and uh, it continues to push uh, not only high-end boards, but also, and just as important, uh, more uh, affordable boards, which is, um, we're probably focused more on that tonight. But welcome to the stream, Mr. Upas of Cannon Keys. Thanks for having me, guys. Hell yeah. Great. Welcome. Yeah, it's good to be back. So do we want to do we want to start spicy? And when we, we want to talk about some stuff, let's talk about some some more affordable boards. We'll let you pick. 
dude, let's 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 go right into the spice, man. Let's go, let's let's go, go right in. Getting hot. Right. Yeah. Getting Listen, hot and heavy. I didn't get a satisfaction 75. <laughs> How dare you? That is your oh, fault. Oh man. <laughs> that is your fault. Clear it out. So, uh guys, for those who don't know, the Satisfaction 75, an amazing board. It ran in the uh it ran Latin 2019. Uh, obviously winning the 2020 mix on uh they're not mechs on deck but mech madness uh the round two was run this past november um not without its faults there were some issues there we'll go into the issues it was supposed to run on a saturday got pushed back a day um and was kind of in this honestly bullshit just like month of hatred with the nk65 and the sat 75 so let's talk talk about what happened Talk about, you know, just your that week was probably I am I know it was a rough week. <laughs> so let's let's dive into it. Yeah, yeah, it was it was definitely a rough week. So so there were definitely mistakes made on our part. So uh I guess the first thing was we decided, or or rather I decided that a great time to uh ship a brand new feature to our custom checkout site, which was order edits. Like on the satisfaction 75 buy, you could go into our site and like add items after the fact, right? Um, I decided to, to ship that kind of like for the Satisfaction 75 group buy. That was a mistake. Uh, so, <laughs> so that was the reason for the initial delay, right? Uh, we kind of rolled that out. There were some issues with it. And, you know, we, we tried to fix it. And it was like, no, this, this just isn't working. We're going to punt till tomorrow and then address it then, right? Which gave me like an extra day to like fix all the stuff that we found. Um, but demand was way, way, way higher than we expected. So there was a bug, uh, when the actual release happened and like everyone or not, not everyone, but some people could get through. Um, and the bug was related to just like the scale that we were hitting and it was not something that we expected. Right. Um, for, for those of you who are more technically inclined, um, we hit some sort of like rate limits on on some of our services and, and we didn't handle those as well as we thought we we would in the code and while we tested we didn't test to the, like, the same scale that we experienced on the satisfaction 75 drop day um we did kind of look at traffic on the first day to kind of estimate what traffic would be on the second day but it, it surpassed even that right so <laughs> so so first like yes th we absolutely made mistakes on the satisfaction 75 group by like that is undoubtedly something that happened right um, I want to say that like another mistake that we made was also kind of just being like, oh, it was, it was still fair. Like everything's fine. Like everyone still had a fair chance. Like th that was probably the worst thing we could have said, like right then and there <laughs> in the moment, you know, like, um, while that may have been true, it, it, it wasn't the right thing to say right then and there. Like, um, there was definitely a bug. People hit the bug. That sucks. Right. Um, and, and, and like we should have led with like, look, we empathize with your situation and, and, and that sucks and, and we're sorry. Right. And, and I think we eventually did, did say that. Um, but, but yeah, there were, there was just a lot of, a lot of bad stuff thrown our way. Yeah. Um, it was definitely not a fun weekend. So I will say, so, yeah. I am very glad that it got shifted back the to the next day to Sunday because I did the prototype build stream on that Saturday, which it would have been like right after everything happened. And then I can't, I just can't imagine what the chat would have been like. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but no, it, it it's, it's funny. Cause like, this isn't the first time that something like this has happened. You look back at the Bauer one release, you know, that was what, how I can't remember how many people it was. It's like 70 something or uh, yeah. yeah, where they, they got in and they were able to like pay for a board and then didn't get it, you know? Um, but it is, it is crazy that people went to the extent that they did. It's saying, it seemed like there was a, almost like a witch hunt on Reddit. And then, you know, did have to kind of like change up the, the discord and stuff. And I'm, I'm interested as, I feel like we've seen, especially as of late, more uh, companies kind of shifting the way that they utilize Discord as a platform for products. How did the whole situation make you rethink Discord as a platform for for uh, your products? Mm -hmm. 
So um, I guess first, first, if we're talking about Discord, we also have to address the fact that, like, look, looking back at like that weekend, a bunch of people were banned in our Discord because you know they were they were cursing at us, they were you know like saying mean things, and like you know a lot of them would claim, oh, we were we were being very civil, and I'm sure a lot of people were actually being civil who got banned, and they were kind of caught in the crossfire, right? But I also I also think that like a lot of people who got banned were kind of being hateful and like, you know, throwing stuff our way. And, um, you know, like, again, I, I apologize to all those people who didn't deserve bans, right? And that, that never should have happened. But like, it was, again, like the mod team wasn't equipped for that. Like we had so many channels in our discord that were just like all open. So like, you know, they would mo go moderate one channel and then see like everyone move to like another channel to like continue to spew criticism in, in a not so constructive way. And, you know, like it was just so hard to manage. So like they were they were basically kind of set up to fail, right? Mm -hmm. And that's on that's on me as you know, Canon Keys owner, that's on like the Canon Keys team for for not doing a better job of, you know, putting the guardrails in place so that when something like that happens, like it is manageable, right? It's like you can find the people who are actually uh, you know, the, the problem makers and 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 address those accordingly, right? Yeah. Um yeah. And you also have a, you have a bunch of you have a bunch of moderators that are not employed. It's, yeah, they're they're it's unpaid mods. It's a, it's a like, community thing. So yeah, and it's it's difficult. Like we're very fortunate that luckily our Discord has never had like has never just been set fire to, um, especially on on any scale uh, such as that. But like you know, Osiris brought this up a long time ago. Discords are kind of like a store, right? It's kind of like being in the building of a store, and if you go in there and start saying like, fuck you, I didn't get my keyboard. They would ask you to leave. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, they can't say like, get everything out. Everything you say in Discord is the equivalent of going into Can of Keys, the brick and mortar store, and saying that to, to, to everybody else at the store. Like that's not, yeah. that would not fly. I, I like that analogy. I mean, it is the internet. So like as someone who's setting up the Discord, like you, there are some expectations around like, okay, it's the internet. People have anonymity. They're going to be a little bit more, if they were in person, they would never say these things, oh, right? Yeah, God no. So, um, you know, there is an element of that, but but yeah, I mean, it, the, what we did at, to our Discord after that was we really trimmed down the number of channels just to make it more manageable. And then um, the thing I like about Discord is like it is a good place for people who are like interested in our products to you know talk about them or talk about other keyboards that you're, you know might compete with them or you know just talk through their options and, and participate in like a community, right? And that's what I love about the Discord. Um, and I, you know, I didn't really want to get rid of that, right? Um, so we we pared down the channels, and now like on drop days, where they're going to be like where we expect like you know thousands of people trying to buy a limited quantity keyboard, um, we'll lock the Discord. We'll we'll just be like, look, like you can complain, you can rant, like it, we understand. Like it, it it can be a frustrating experience to not get what you want, right? Um, you know, I've, I've been in that situation tons of times. Like I like sneakers, right? <laughs> yeah. I, last, yeah, dude. Dude, what, what was it last weekend? I tried to get the, the Yeezy 700 creams and I, I just couldn't, you know, and it, it's just like, okay, I, I didn't get it. Right. Um, I sure Move you can on, complain take your about, L's like, with dignity. <laughs> that's, that's kind of how I feel. Right. And, and it's like, you know, I, I know that people get upset when they take L's. So it's like, all right, you can go complain. I, I just don't want to just don't complain at us and like, don't, don't curse at us. And like, you know, don't, don't get hateful with it. So we lock it up. Um, people who, uh, you know, participate in the discord and are there normally, um, there's still a channel for them basically. And it, all you have to do is like participate and then ask a mod and they give you the role. So all that kind of stuff. So, so yeah, that's how it, that's how it works now. Um, so let's be right back and going to send Kanye a very mean letter. <laughs> Dude, right. Go on a witch hunt for Kanye to to yeah. get to get his uh his sneaker he likes it uh yeah i mean starstone brings up a good point which is do vendors even need discords um i think it's this it, i think as we see the evolve evolve uh, we see the evolving uh hobby and continue to grow i could see that being more and more of a thing where vendors are just like listen this is, you know, we've, we've seen it with project keyboards, right? This is a discord for like announcements. If you want to react, sure. But like, this is just a discord for announcements. You, so if you want to set it up to where you get pinged on discord, great. But you know, like I said, email does take 
uh, do a great job doing that as well. And I, and I feel like a lot of that comes from most vendors are community members that become vendors. And then like having to basically be like, no, I'm no longer like community. I'm vendor can be a hard change to make. So do yeah. you ever see yourself just going no more discord, just pings? I mean, if it, you know, if it, if it gets to a point where like, it's, it's just not adding a ton of value and, you know, people aren't getting anything out of it or like, you know, the community leaves the discord, then yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, if it is manageable and, you know, the mods are having a good time in there and there is a community, I don't see, I don't see the harm in it. Is it necessary? I, again, I, I agree with Starston. It's probably not necessary. Right. But it's nice. Right. Mm. For the people who want to participate in that, it can be nice. Yeah, for um, sure. It is, it is like, yeah, it, it is something you have to manage though. And, and at a certain point, like the cost could outweigh the benefits, right? Mm -hmm. um, looking at it from like a vendor perspective, you, you, you kind of constantly have to make that call, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, if it's, if it's not really providing people a good community or, you know, it's, you're getting too much hate, it takes too much to manage. At that point, it's like, maybe, maybe I shouldn't. So yeah, that's my take. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I think, it's also one of those things that there is while yes, you can send out emails, you can do other things like that doesn't have the same um, impact that discord can have on someone, especially as they're new. Right. Um, I think a lot of, a lot of people will say, Oh, well we don't vendors don't need discords because there's all these communities that have discords on Twitch, like our discord, Nathan's discord, top clack. There's all these places you can go to get, um, to, you know, to talk to people, but not everyone looks towards content creation to get more information. They're going to look at um, something like the Canon keys discord or Canon keys. They're going to look there. They say, Oh, discord. I can meet people. There's, you know, thousands of people there. I can ask questions um, and then go uh, on to find out different content creators and whatnot. Um, but I think it's also because geek hack sucks. Like, <laughs> like geek hack sucks. Like just getting information out. It's just so difficult, um, especially, and this is one thing I want to get into with like Canon keys, y'all are scaling up so big. The amount of products that you've gone from, you know, offering even this time last year or, uh, when you first started with like waves, uh, back almost oh, two man, years yeah. ago now, um, the, the amount of things that you're doing, having that discord is great. Cause it gives you a place where you can push everything out. It's not super crazy. It doesn't get buried like everything on geek hack. Like people were talking the other day when you go on a geek hack group buys and someone ping something from like 2016 and it's like, okay, well what the hell? Well, now I can't find what's running right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, there's, there's other ways that community members have tried to address discoverability, right? There's like Mac group buys, there's key cap blender. Um, you know, I, I think they do a pretty good job. And those are all community run too, right? Like, so yeah, there are, there are other options, but you know, for things like, you know, new switches coming out and um, I don't know if you're changing stabs or whatever, right? Like not everything kind of falls into this group by or, or key cap categorization. So I absolutely agree. Like it is nice to have a place like that. And, you know, one thing that we've always tried to do is like also um, kind of like, for the people who subscribe to our newsletter, like we want to tell you about the stuff that we're doing because because like you've opted in to like receiving this notification, yeah. right? Um, so, you know, we're, we're really cognizant of the fact that like, look, some people don't want to come to the Discord, right? And they, they just want to get an email in their inbox. And um, we try to deliver the information, you know, both of those ways. Yeah. So. Uh, one thing I do want to talk about, which is it's kind of interesting that we like 2020 is I feel like the first time. Uh, well, okay. I, I think box gate was the first time that this kind of a, a PR response had to happen. And you talked about how you didn't make the the best choice in making it, uh, for, I think a lot of people, honestly, uh, you, you, when you, when you see response, typically the first response is I don't have a response right now, but I'm working on it, which is yeah. like, that's what you see. Like, we'll reach out to you later for a response. So how has it been kind of navigating with, you know, now, now you're kind of having to do PR because yeah. there are, I mean, you faced some, some of the similar issues with iron 180 mm -hmm. uh, and some of the, you know, if, if you're going to continue to sell iron boards, you're going to continue to sell boards that people are not going to be able to get and be upset yeah. about it. So uh, how has it been like kind of 
with PR and learning learning that aspect of it? So Iron Iron 180 was generally pretty smooth. Um, like we learned a lot from Satisfaction 75 round two, which we used to kind of make sure that Iron 180 went well. Um, so, you know, there weren't that many issues there, but yeah, in, in terms of like the PR aspect, like, you know, it feels like we're no longer just like the small community vendor anymore, right? Like, like you, you got, like you guys were saying, we're, we're trying to scale up and we're offering more products and, you know, we have a team now, like it's, it's crazy, you know? Um, so like the, the words that we say have, they, they hold more weight now. Right. And, and we have to be, I have to be careful with what I say, um, whether that's in like a, like a, a emergency situation, similar like Satisfaction 75 or, or any, any other place as well. So um, yeah, there, there is like an, an extra aspect to that. Um, so yeah, it, it's just, it's just kind of hard to navigate. It's almost like a change in mindset, right? It's like, look, I, another thing too, that, that like uh, goes with this is whenever we're communicating things out, it's like, we're going to have to repeat the same you know pieces of information over and over and over in a bunch of different ways, just so that everyone who's looking for this information can find it, right? Mm -hmm. It's like when, when I was a small community vendor with, without much reach, it's like the people who are supporting you were going to like go seek that stuff out. But now it's like, you got to make it easy for people, right? Mm -hmm. And it's it's like one of the frustrating things to me. It's like, I'll, I'll write a newsletter and then uh, my wife will, will proofread it. And she'll be like, oh, you're missing this, 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 and this information. I'll be like, well, it's it's, it's on the product page or it's, it's in the geek hack or it's, <laughs> and it's like, it's not good enough. Like it's got to be everywhere so that, you know, um, everyone who wants it in whatever way can get it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's interesting because like when we started this, you know, we, after a few months in, we, you know, Cyrus and I both kind of realized like we can't go and say exactly whatever we want because we both speak for each other and we both, you have to, you don't want to say anything that's too dumb or it's, or just being something being taken out of context. And while obviously more people will listen to to read your newsletters than listen to what we have to say, it's kind of that goofy, like weird thing where it's like, oh, what I say might affect the other person in the situation negatively. And yeah. now I have to. Yeah. And I think that's, that's probably one of like the biggest fears. It's like something that you say will be taken out of context because like, I, you know, I, I feel like we try to still be pretty transparent and like, you know, speak our minds when, when appropriate, but, but again, like, you know, people can for sound bites or, you know, the copy paste, just the message that like, you know, Oh, this is, this is what the person said, you know? So that is, that is pretty, uh, I don't know, something to just be wary of. Yeah, for sure. Every, every time, so like when we're streaming, right, I have it set up to where I see, you know, how many viewers time, how many clips, if I see clips done, I go back and I watch them all to make sure that they were like clipped to where it, it's like, is this done out of context? Like, is there something that happened right here that's going to like piss someone off because like that we don't intend to because it was, you know, clipped completely out of context, right? Like we were maybe have, making a joke about something. And in that specific instance, it doesn't look like it's actually a joke. It actually looks like we're like yeah. mad at something. So yeah, dude, that's a, it's a, the biggest, biggest. Fear. I did, I, I did slip up on that, which I'll publicly state right now. All right. Using the Mexon deck account, making a joke about gatekeeping. <laughs> I said on L's on keep noob stream. I said, don't even talk to me if you don't own a key cool. <laughs> Just before that was a joke. All right. And I'm sure someone will go in and while I'm laughing through saying, don't even talk to me, whatever. But yeah, uh, some relax, right? <laughs> just, just relax. Um, but uh, no. And then the other thing I want to talk about is the stickers. No. Oh, yeah. The stickers. You sold some legendary stickers. Dude, I, I was, I was going to keep one on my desk. Yeah. And there it is. <laughs> <laughs> got the, got the sticker. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> Um, we actually ordered like a whole bunch of them. And if, if someone leaves a, uh, like a comment in their order notes asking for one, we'll just add it to their order. So pro tip, if you're, if you're watching, you want one, uh, don't want to pay, what was it? 500 something dollars for it. <laughs> like <laughs> just, just, uh, just ask in your order notes and, uh, we'll try to do it as, as long as we have them, we'll do it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And but, but that was that was pre custom checkout. So like that was kind of like because we don't have a custom checkout yet, we need to do like these other weird mitigation strategies. Because you know, we 
before we made the custom checkout, we had done a lot of like investigation into like, how do these bots work? And like, what do they typically do? So we knew that like this honeypot strategy could, could be effective. So it was <laughs> like, man, the bots are here. Like, and that's, that's another thing. Like I hear people being like, man, you should just go back to first come first serve. Like I felt like I had so much of a better chance in first come first serve. And it's like, whoa, little do you know, like, yeah. look, we've seen, we've seen the bots. We, we've seen them. And it's like, I, sure. Like maybe, maybe for a release, we can get rid of the custom raffle system, but like, you, I, I don't think you're going to have any better of a chance. So unless you're a botter, maybe, maybe that's why. Look at, look at graphics cards right now, right? Like the newest, the newest line of, of graphics cards have been out for three or four months at this point. You still can't get them. They're still getting yeah. bought up by bots as it happens. Um, but I did want to ask about the custom checkout system because that is something that we've seen. You know, a couple of people try to do uh, something like the what Keycult's doing with theirs, and mm-hmm. then obviously you developed your own. What is that uh, process? How does that work? How does it different from uh, the other options, and you know, from what you've done in the past? Yeah. So, um, so basically, with the custom checkout system, the, the, okay. So the raffles are a great way to run. Uh, like group buys, right? I, I think that's that's a fair way to do things. Um, the one downside of raffles is, you know, I I can ask I can I can ask my brother to enter, I can ask my sister to enter, I ask my friend to enter, right? And the time commitment there is like, oh, just just go, you know, just go hop through these few steps. It takes like five minutes, and you'll be done, and I'll have an entry, and if you win, I'll pay you back, right? Um, the whole idea behind the custom checkout system was just to make it harder to bot or game the system, right? Yeah. There's never, I, at least from my perspective, there's never going to be a foolproof way of preventing any bot ever given someone with enough time to like, you know, to prevent any bots, right? It's just impossible. It's like a, it's like a constant battle. Like you, you'll implement like another mitigation and they're going to figure out a way around and, and then you go, go, go on to the next and they, they find a way around, right? Um, so the custom checkout was an attempt to kind of like raise that bar, right? Um, before anyone with like a run of the mill Shopify bot, you know, th- they can snipe whatever they want on a Shopify store, right? So if someone's just using Shopify, um, they're bots that are well equipped to to buy things up as quickly as possible from Shopify stores, right? If there's nothing custom. Now that can't be done for like say the um, key cult raffle, but again, like you know, you can reach out to your friends and family yeah. and, and and get more entries that way. Um, with the raffle queue. You know, we know there are still ways you can game the system. Uh, You know, we we just try to figure out the best ways to catch the people who who game them in the ways that we know about, right? Um, Ideally, you want to prevent them from placing an order at all. But the second best thing is to catch them after the fact, right? So we've built into our system like ways we could do both, like block them up front and also catch them after the fact, right? Um, I don't want to I don't want to go into too many specifics about like how it how it works and stuff, but uh, what I will say is, um, if you if you if you follow the instructions on the raffle queue and and like you you don't try to game the system, you're going to have a pretty decent chance of getting through. And um, on top of that, too, like we're we're constantly making improvements to the system, right? Uh, one of the first things we added, which you know, again, probably the poor timing was like order edits, right? People are like, oh man, I don't I don't want to have to rush through and like you know I've have to select all my extras. Like if I, if someone was just buying the board, it'd be way easier for them to get through. Cause that, you know, no cart is guaranteed until you check out. So we're like, okay, well now you can rush through still. And you know, you can add your extras later. Right. That's how we kind of address that. And then um, I think at one point, like the keyboard itself, the box wasn't checked and some people forgot to check the box. So now whenever we have a drop, the keyboard's like, all right, you're joining for this keyboard. The box already checked. Like it, mm-hmm. it's there, you know? Um, so, you know, we're, we're going to continue to keep iterating on our raffle queue system. Like th- th- this isn't the end We're we're constantly investing in it to try to make it a better customer experience, but also to make it better equipped to, you know, catch more bots and, and prevent more bots and, and, uh, things of that nature. So, um, things are happening behind the scenes. Things are happening that people can see as well. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just constantly evolving. It, there, there is no, like, this is it. So. Um, I don't think it'll ever be finished. Well, you know, it's a good way to get rid of bots. Let's just yeah, open, I mean, let's just open that back door up 
let's just let's just let it be a free for all. So speaking of that topic, you ordered quite a few Satisfaction seventy five V twos. Oh yeah, more than do you? Are you? I know it's over. I know it's over a thousand. Mm-hmm. Are you okay releasing the the final number? We we bumped it to over twelve hundred um, after that day one. So we sold a heck of a lot of them, man. And like uh, again, we you know we we weren't we we didn't want to over overdo our capacity, right? Because like the the worst thing you could do is take in too many orders, take too many people's money, and then not deliver or not deliver in a timely fashion. So you know we had a lot of the criticism we got was like, why don't you just make it unlimited? And it's like, well, you know. We, we can't like if we make it unlimited, like that's all we're going to be doing in 2021. And, yeah. you know, and, there's and we'll logistics fail. involved. <laughs> yeah, like, like, you know, and, and like, you know, you're going to have to wait a year and a half or, or two years, you know, um, you, you see the same things for like, you know, people, Rama does a hell of a job. Like they do unlimited buys and, and they get them out in like a, a pretty good timely fashion for something unlimited and the quality is high and all this stuff. And people still complain like, wow, the wait is so long. And it's like, well, I mean, you got to pick your poison, right? Yeah. You, you get an unlimited buy, you're going to have to wait a long time. They also do like four products a year, which yeah. is, yeah. I mean, and, yeah, and it's not, cool. And, and and they don't have to worry about keycap sets, right. and PCBs and switches and all and, that other stuff. So, yeah. So, you know, it's, it's like we had to limit we had to limit because you know the capacity just wasn't there. We weren't set up to that for for that. So, anyways, yeah. maybe one day it'd be great. It'd be great that everyone. You know, and it, one thing I want to reiterate to just everybody: no vendor is sitting there going, "I hope I want to limit the amount of boards." Like, I, I I feel like that's that can be a common misconception. Like. Is there some cool stuff that happens when you can do kind of a limited thing? Yeah, like the, it's cool to have something special, but I, I, I know I speak for ninety percent of vendors that they would rather, if if given the opportunity, they would put if ever if anyone who wants one would get one. So, which I mean, keycap sets, right? We don't see yeah. limits on keycap sets. Yeah, and, and and the reason we don't see limits on keycap sets is because there's no QC involved. You know, like yeah. there's. It, it, getting a keyboard out to customers is a time intensive process. Like each single one has to be QC'd by at least one person, maybe yeah. multiple. So it's like, you know, it's, it's a long process. Yeah. If, if keyboards were just, you get product, put it in box and send it, then it would be, be happy much easier. <laughs> like the fact that, you know, you, there is some sort of QC process. It's a much longer process overall. It's just like, there's so much more involved in that, you know, mm-hmm. a keycap set, someone gets one that's like wonky and messes up it's easy to get another one out to them because you've got those extras that are there with keyboards yeah you still got some extras but it's like much more of a process you gotta worry about you know a whole bunch of other yeah. factors get and, and, and i mean back to <laughs> exactly and then a lot of the extras that you buy are because you know you're gonna have a certain percent end up as b stock right yep. so it's like you have to buy enough extras to cover all the people to make sure they get a stock. And then also like, if there are any weird issues in shipping or whatever, you got to cover those too. So, um, you know, when I first started, um, when I first started with the satisfaction, I was like, look, I, I don't want to spend on packaging. Like, I just want to get it to people safe, but it's like, look, the packaging helps. The the last thing I want, like my perspective after that buy was like, look, we, we need to do packaging because, um, like, and we started doing the phone cases. The, the reason for that was because during the satisfaction round one, like we thought things were packed well, but like, dude, if you don't have like a hard case around a keyboard or like layers and layers of foam of thick foam, like who knows what these courier services are going to do. So, oh, you yeah. know, they're just eating them. Yeah. So it's, it's, I've saw even just like delivering the squids just to the door of USPS. And the guy was like, here, let me help you out. And I was handing into him. He's just like throwing them. I'm like, thank yeah. God that there's just thick foam. There yeah. This is a heavy board. And I'm like, he's just tossed them in this bin. I was like, oh God. <laughs> yeah. So luckily, luckily haven't seen any issues damage wise, but yeah, it's, I mean, what was the Kepler? I mean, look at the Kepler. They get a fucking Pelican case. <laughs> Like, exactly. I mean, you, like if they could drop that from a plane onto the ground, the board <laughs> still be working. Well, that, that that thing was what, like eight hundred something, yeah, eight hundred something yeah. dollars. So, like, yeah, like that's what that's what it that's what it means. Um, yeah, I, I I hear Nathan asking about like why don't you just do a raffle? Um, 
look, like the problem with the raffle is you tell your friends and family, hey, be here at this time and enter. And it takes like 30 seconds. And that's all it takes. You know, like the thing about this, this like raffle queue is there's a bit of a time commitment, a bit yeah. like, and that's kind of a feature, right? Like sitting there for five minutes is is like, oh, now you're going to have to ask everyone to sit there for five minutes. And, and that's a bigger of an ask than like, oh, just go to this yeah. form and submit it. So, yeah. Again, it's all about raising that bar for for like botters and 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 game and, and like having the system be gamed, right? Yeah, um, which I feel like, especially when I look back onto after the aftermath of the the round two, I feel like a lot of that was lost. The idea of you're doing this whole process, and the reason why this whole system was in place is to prevent bots. You know, we're mm-hmm. talking about not a lot of people remember this because it was so long ago now. But I remember Sat seventy five round one. There was that guy that was trying to flip his spot on Mech Market, and you just were like, "No, dude, your spot. I'm taking your spot back. Like, refund your money. Like, this is my spot. Like, you don't put up with that stuff." And it's it's awesome to see because you're about getting the keyboards in the hands of the people in the community who want them, not in the hands of people who are going to flip them, who are going to, you know, just get it and then sell it immediately, or you know, other things like that. Yeah, I mean, like we don't like it when people flip our stuff. Like, it's just you know, why? Like we 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 sold it for a certain price. Um, you know, we thought it was a fair price, and like you know, why are you know why why are you like who are you to say that like oh you no know, this is worth seven hundred when we said you know it was four eighty or whatever and mm-hmm. yeah and I, I then am, you don't even have the product in hand. It's like yeah. man, yeah. I I am I'm genuinely curious. So when you see like a satisfaction seventy five. Uh, or or we'll we'll talk about the wreck the wreck 1800 there were people who were selling they bought it and were selling it before it had even gotten shipped to them so was, so <laughs> which was that i remember that i don't know if that was where people were already trying to sell wrecked 1800s but um but how do you feel as as someone who has, who designs a board and sells a board how do you feel about when people do flip or, or well, let's say, let's say flip, because to me, flipping is having zero intention of selling, of building the board and buying it to make a profit. To me, that's flipping. And then, how do you feel about people who basically just go, "Hey, this board's worth this much. I like this board, but I no longer like it, or I need the money elsewhere." But I built it and I, I typed on it, and now I'm selling it for X amount of money. I think I'm much more okay with the latter. It's like, look, you gave it a try, and, and maybe you found it wasn't for you, and like. Again, it, aftermarket prices are what they are, right? It's like, who am I to say, like, oh no, you should sell. It. You have to sell it at. I know, I know some some designers do try to be like, oh, you have to sell it at the price I sold it to you for. But that's so hard to track, and it's like no yeah. one, no one has the time to do that. So for me, it's basically like, look, you gave it, you gave it a try. You found out it wasn't for you. Like, okay, go sell it and and yeah. sell it for whatever. But yeah, I I really don't really take kindly to people. Um, buying it just to flip it this this happened on our devastating tkl board right mm-hmm. um first we were we were shocked with how quickly it sold out it was like gone in I think less than like 30 minutes maybe maybe even less than that i forget a few minutes basically um and then we saw like you know people flipping and, and we got some support tickets of people trying to like clearly who have clearly flipped it and you know are like asking to like change address to like someone else they like, give some some excuse um and and we just canceled those orders it's like they haven't they hadn't even shipped yet. If if these people waited three four days, you know, for us to ship them out, we couldn't have done anything about it. But if we if we find out that you're flipping and like there's proof and like incontrovertible evidence that this is your order that you have flipped and you don't even have the product yet, it's like <laughs> in our in our terms and conditions, we reserve every right to cancel your order for whatever reason. So we'll just cancel it. Yeah. Miss me with that bullshit, <laughs> dude. It just sucks because like if you look at the that that line that you've done, you know, the brutal, the savage, the wreck, the devastating, those are all designed to be a board that's in stock people. It's like a mid, it's like a mid price board. It's, it's super good, especially for what you pay for it. You're able to get it. And it just feels like that is the market. Like those are getting eaten up by people who just want to flip them. And it sucks because that's a a huge market to get people into the community or into the higher end Mm -hmm. of the, uh, the community. So our our perspective there is like, look, we're going to we've already publicly stated like every single one of these boards is getting another run and they're going to continue to get other runs until like they're finally in stock. You know, like they sit on the shelves for a little bit. Right. 
And that's the goal. We want to keep them in stock so that when people are coming into the community, they can have an option they can buy, right? Um, is it keeping things in stock? There's a cost to to the vendor to do that, right? Yeah. It's like if, if you're if you can sell things immediately as soon as they get listed, that's better for a, a vendor because like okay, then you're getting more cash flow. You can do more things. You can expand faster. But one thing that we're committing to with the series is like, look, no, we really do want to keep it in stock. Yeah. And we're we're trying to make moves so that um, we can you know have enough coming in every month that um, that we can f start to fulfill demand, right? And mm -hmm. can keep them in stock. So. Yeah. So yeah, like that was that's kind of our strategy to combat the flip, flipping. There, it's like, look, if if a good you think is scarce is no longer scarce, what's what's the point in flipping it, right? Mm. Um, you know, another thing that helps with this series is like, look, we have a quality disclaimer where it's like, look, anything on the bottom of the keyboard, like, dude, you can't see it when it's on a desk, like that's going to pass as a stock for us, right? Yep. And that helps us keep these things in stock as well, right? I I really appreciate that because it's like, listen. If this was a super duper high end board and we were selling, you'd be paying a super duper high end price. Mm -hmm. But boards cost a lot of money. Aluminum prices are going up, which mm -hmm. sucks. Um, they are, yeah. And yep. it's it's a joke because I have boards that are going to be more expensive than I wanted them to. Um, but it's there. You we can't grow without these barrier you know the the entry level boards or mm -hmm. the you know kind of not not maybe not completely entry but you know not everybody is sitting with you know eight hundred dollars ready to buy a key cold that's that's you know it just and then you still have to get caps and switches and all that and so mm -hmm. that's why the series and especially the honestly the wrecked 1800 is like sh like should be a staple in the community because you know, we were talking about this last night, how many fucking times if you're if you're a content creator, if you're anyone who's talked to your friends about keyboards and chat, let me know if this is right. But I get asked all the time. I need a numpad. Yep, you need the I numpad. need a numpad. Where's the numpad? Where's the fucking yep. numpad? Like, I can't do this without a numpad. I'm like, I. There's like four options and they're all really fucking expensive. <laughs> so. Uh, I, I really, I hope to see the wrecked grow. I do have one question. I want to make you pick your favorite. I want to make you pick your favorite child. All right. Mm -hmm. We've got sat 75, mm -hmm. We've got the brutal wrecked savage chimera. Am I mm -hmm. missing one? We, we won't count the ones that haven't been sold yet. Oh man. <laughs> so my, I can talk about my current favorite. <laughs> we can talk about that. In a minute. Let's pick out of these five, which what's okay. the one, you know, gun to your head. This is the last board you're ever going to use. I'm taking the Satisfaction 75. Yeah, there it is over the Chimera, which is because the Chimera is. I, dude, I love the Chimera 60, too. If it was a sixty percent, I'd buy it. I, I love the Chimera too, but it the Satisfaction has the knob. Oh, Oop. my video is gone. Sorry, guys. No worries. And <laughs> the knob. We're back. <laughs> and we're back. Cool. Yeah, no, the, the Satisfaction has has the knob, and like I've gotten so used to using it for so many different things, and it's just like. <laughs> All right, you know, like <laughs> that, that's that's what did it in for me. Um, but I have an I have a new keyboard coming out called the Balance. Hasn't even hit IC yet. I'm waiting on uh, the final rounds of prototypes to post the IC. Um, but that's like a F Roless 1800 style. It's not quite 1800. It's more like a a, a Blackbird, a Duck Blackbird, if you know yeah. that. Layers the, very similar that's to that. the where it has the the row in between. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that one that one you call them. Yeah, and it has a knob on it, so mm -hmm. so that's that's the one I'm I'm currently currently pretty excited about. Um, I did a few things on that board which I think are pretty cool, and I can't wait to show everyone else. And I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited. Are you gonna show off after stream? Uh, <laughs> it's it's like I have I have like an early prototype up here. <gasps> Ooh, yeah ooh. is it is it going to be the hhkb style like the blackbird or is it going to be style? no no it's it's not so Good. i'm not a huge hhkb Good. fan so like that's so you know again i Amazing. when i design boards I, I typically design mostly to my preferences for better or for worse you know like it's it's something that i want and something i want to use and i'm not a huge fan of hhkb so uh, can, can we can we maybe maybe even just the tiniest of leaks yeah you know? yeah like if we flood so if we fl how about this if we flood the entire chat with the Mexon horn emote I'm talking every single, if I look at chat and all I see are horns, we'll show it off. <laughs> Let's get your horns out. Sounds good to me. <laughs> I like the, 
person that just followed his Twitch name is I exist, therefore I think. <laughs> Boom. Also, um, Sloop of War. We'll go through there. You have Sloop of War. We got a lot of new followers. Golf Juliet, Bravo, uh, Chippy RS, INF Phoenix, ZU, and Ar- Anarchy, Kruger Live. I see a lot of uh, Happy Tail Wag. Back. They're 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 going. We got some. <laughs> We even got some eggplants. Thank you. <laughs> Six wrists. Boom. Boom. Lots of horns. I'm all excited. the horns. All the leaks. All right. You guys ready? So th- this uh, is actually... Minterly did a build stream with one of these. <laughs> so so if you're interested, I think she might have uh, posted something on YouTube or another. But this is the balance. Ooh. This is the... Ooh. Um, this is the layout you get. Ooh, that's this clean. is a uh, a brass so accent piece. So There's actually two of them. There's one here, one here. I think in the group buy, we're going to um, offer different colors of accent pieces. It's not just going to be brass. Uh, this is one of the satisfaction knobs for the balance. We'll probably have another knob, maybe with the Canon Keys logo. Um, so that's what I'm thinking right now. Um, it's got this long right shift, the uh, the right shift that nobody likes except for me. I like it, so it's there. Um, hey. Cool. So that's that's the that's the layout. Um, some of the things I like, the mm. side profile here, um, it's that's clean. The, the top isn't quite flush to the bottom. There's a little there's like a little gap right here, and that, I, I I like this effect. Um, it has a little curve here, and then this this is also slightly curved. It's not a straight line. So it I, adds I just, depth. I just, it adds yeah. depth to that curve. I really like that. I, I, I like how this thing looks um, from the side a lot, and I like how this like the silver piece just peeks out. Um, when we do it for group by, it's going to be um, it's going to be two tone. I, I I really like how the two tone came out, so we're we're going to do two tones um, on the back. This is why it's called the balance. Like it, it looks like it's almost balancing on this little piece right here. That's sweet. Um, so, that looks... so that's why it's called the balance. Ooh, that looks like really. Um, that looks USB really goes clean. in right there. This this one is actually there's no daughter board inside. There's no there's no <laughs> real PCB or I didn't I was lazy and I didn't. Uh, can you show off the I didn't, I didn't actually build the PCB, so it's just there for like <laughs> the layout. Um but yeah, like I'm I'm really excited mm. to, to do That's the ID for this one. And you got yeah. some you got some artisan holders right there in the middle. I mean That's right. Yeah. Right. Your artisans, show them off right here. Like show right them underneath off. the knob. So, Fancy knob, yeah. like oh that just that really and, that really ticks a lot of boxes. And and there's no brass weight, but I I think it's per, it's like it's plenty heavy for me. Like you know, it's 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 still substantial. So I I don't think I'm gonna add one. Um, acoustically, I think it sounds good. Um, the one thing I didn't like on the protos, I forgot to put acoustic um, cutouts on the plate, so the space bar was really loud. So, um, I'm fixing that uh, for for the final protos, and uh, you know, we'll see how that see how that turns out. That's that's clean. That's really yeah. cool. I like. You know, I I was I was talking because I'm I'm you know I've been obviously and and you know this the next thing the next thing the next thing right the whatever is like already been announced is old news at that point you're still hyped about the next thing that's coming up and you know I was talking to Blind Assassin I was like I don't want a brass plate on this next one or a brass a brass weight I'm like let's not make this a 14 pound board <laughs> let's maybe dial it back and go a different direction which he told me like you know blink three times if you're okay <laughs> <laughs> but I, I wouldn't mind seeing you know i like with the 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 brutal savage wreck i like that there's not a brass weight i like that it's because it's an aluminum it's a metal keyboard it's still gonna be heavy mm-hmm. but you know I, sometimes i don't like with the bumper i like just being able to grab it and throw it on my desk and not have to like pull a muscle doing it <laughs> Yeah, I mean, again, brass weights have time and place, and you know, I, I've put brass weights on a lot of keyboards, and um, Satisfaction had one, Chimera has one. Like for this one, it just I just don't think it's necessary. I think it sounds good without one, and I, I don't see the need. You know, I, if I were to add it at this point, I'd just be adding it for the sake of adding it, and it's just for me, it's I, I don't need it. So mm-hmm. it's it's not always needed, you know. And yeah. I think people get people get stuck thinking that it's needed and thinking that it's I think, and I like the way that it's become almost more of a used for aesthetic. Like you look at the new, uh, you know, uh, the stuff from Smith and Rune where it's, you know, used more while it's still there. It's used as a, as a way to show off their logo, um, mm-hmm. stuff like that. I, I love that. 
rather than just being like, yep, here, you know, you look back at like boards that both Chewie and I had the TX 60, where it's just like, yeah, here's a fat brass weight, just bolted into the back, you know, bam, right there. Yeah. Look but at that. least you have a design. Yeah, in but this is a des- I mean, the bottom, the, this is specific, obviously this is not mm-hmm. public, but at least, you know, it's got the name on there. The TX 60 literally was just a brass weight. Yeah. There was nothing on it and not really, and it had the screws on there on the outside. Yeah. So, where like boy, you know, like the Stierka had a really cool weight. Mm-hmm. The the Forever sixty five has a really really cool weight. The, I mean, and we saw. I mean, the Satisfaction seventy five that was, uh, that was a really cool way to like add some art, add just something a little extra when you pick up your keyboard. Um, you know, oh, speak, speak. There were a few people who complained that there was art on the weight. So for round one, we ordered <laughs> blank. We we offered blank weights, and I think there was a grand total of like two people who bought one. <laughs> so. No fun fact, like you know, people like the engravings. People, I, th- I think people just like uniqueness, right? They they want something cool to look at. It's a, you know, I I love picking up my squid in particular because not only does it look crazy with splatter paint all over it, but it's like, oh, by the way, look, it's got a cool, it's got a cute dog on the back, mm-hmm. like, and you know, the time. That's the the perfect board for uh for example which is like by the way do you know that there's like a borderline functioning but not functioning clock on the back of my keyboard it just looks so cool the time sorry it (laughs) It, it is it is quite possibly the coolest looking bottom of of a keyboard that i've ever seen i would i don't think it there's it's even close I, i honestly i can't think of another keyboard that even comes close to that like it on it's kind of like you know Larry Bird was famous for going in and saying you know hey how's it going to be going for going for second place in the three point competition <laughs> <laughs> that's what the time says about having the coolest back but yeah yeah I'm 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 excited I think time I saw someone say that they got theirs already that it's it's pretty oh, yeah. sweet uh, oh it's soon man exciting but uh but yeah so. Chewy, I think you you wanted to ask some questions about the, the ANSI V2. The ANSI V2, I completely forgot about the ANSI. So, guys, if you haven't had it, if you if you're looking for a sixty percent PCB that's just standard sixty, like honestly, the ANSI. I told everyone, um, I told everyone I did the Baca sixty. I didn't actually run it with a PCB, uh, and I just told everyone to like, go buy an ANSI. It's 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 solid PCB. Uh, it's you know. I think of the ones that I've used, only one of them had real issues and it was because of desoldering, not because of actual issues. I did have the flip, the flip issue. There was one where it's like a USB would only work one way. Oh like no. Very, very first run. And I remember you were like, what do you want to do with this? And I was like, fucking yeah, dude, I'll take it. <laughs> I was like, I think it was like, you get one, but you also get the, the fix too. Mm-hmm. Uh, without oh, that's the- right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the, the- there was, your, with, there was your first PR. And it that's was right. <laughs> the 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 first yeah the first and C we we messed up the bottom row like it would work for six point two five but I think there was a uh, like there, one of the switch cutouts for seven U was like offset mm-hmm. oh, or maybe no oh no it was, was the other way around yeah it was six point two five use yeah seven U because it was yeah. for, it was for a wind keyless. That's right. Yeah, the, the seven U would work, but the six two five wouldn't because we we're missing something, or it was offset by a little bit. So yeah, we we just you know I think we we gave people a refund, and then they could also get a second one if they wanted. I think I picked the second one because I remember telling Osiris, I was like, "Fuck yeah!" <laughs> I was like, "I was like, I use seven U. So <laughs> we're good." Yeah. Well, and I remember you had them on the website for a long time, and they were like super cheap. And I was like, "Dude, if you don't care about six point two five." PCB is amazing for like 30 really? bucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we were selling them cause like, you know, there were seven you only and they, they didn't do what they were supposed to. So they were discounted. So yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, uh, so we got the second one. All right. And uh, I have not had a chance to try it out. I, I really want to, I'm excited because I've heard great things about it. You've taken away Alp support, which I have heard. I know that people are probably pissy with you, which whatever, like, you're going to have to find your Alp somewhere else. I, if you do, I strongly suggest the H60 by Heine. I know he plans on continuing to rerun that. I ran the H60 with the uh, with the Squid 60 boards. Um, but what was the reasoning behind that? Uh, people 
So, so a lot of people who were buying the ANC were kind of newer to the hobby as well, I think, or you know, they were using it with their brutals or something like that. And just having the Alps cutouts there can sometimes make it a little bit harder to solder because when you're heating up the pad, there's a bigger surface area. It has to heat up and you know, people would complain about it and um, you kind of get confused or have like cold solder joints. So we decided to remove it. Mm-hmm. Um, that said, like we still have all the files necessary to make the ANSI V1 that had the Alps support. <laughs> Um, if just there's enough, if there's enough demand, you know, yeah, we can do some limited runs. So, uh, if, if someone has like 10 people who want a PCB like that, uh, send in a support ticket, we'll make it happen. So there you go. That's awesome. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's that, that is one thing whenever a, a 60% or whenever a PCB in general uses, uh, supports both Alps and, um, MX, I'm always surprised at how much solder that one leg will just yeah. take because it's just it's just so much and it so yeah I, i'm excited because it does make things a little bit easier to build a little bit easier to desolder too which means you get a little bit more life out of it if you're planning on doing multiple things with it and keeping it uh Ooh, but when you can get that desolder on that left leg just all <laughs> in one funk with the gun like oh it just it's just sitting there empty of solder it's great i mean you have to clean out your solder gun after like a row but, <laughs> but you have to. I'm. I, I'm. I'm very excited to try it out because. Uh, I mean, I literally have three sixty percent <laughs> sitting nice. in range of me. Um. So and I need to rebuild this one. So yeah, I think I'll, I'll probably be snagging up an ANSI V two, uh, which I can give. I I imagine it's going to be just as good. I think uh, honestly, between while I like the H sixty, the H sixty offers a lot of uh variety therefore it is swiss cheese um it's a it's a fantastically made pcb but and trying to scratch off all the itches of people going well i want to make a custom plate i'm like all right go for it but i'll use this pcb but with uh the ansi uh the only thing that it really goes up against is the um the wilba 60 which i think both are equally fantastic boards and honestly if you're looking for one cankeys.com slash max on deck there's the shill <laughs> Gondo, thank you for the host or the raid. Appreciate it, Gondo. Hey, what's up, Gondo? Gondo, Gondo, this is Sagittarius. Hoping, hoping to get a couple, couple good rounds. Oh, okay, here we go. Satisfaction seventy five has got a tough, tough road ahead. <laughs> to be the repeat champion i don't think it's gonna happen i there's just too much you know uh you got too, too, too many too many haters you know like people had some, of anybody else <laughs> people had some bad experiences with uh satisfaction 75 this time around so i i think I, there's no way there's no way we're gonna repeat dude i think it's one of those things it could it could lose in the first round because it, it goes up against the iron 180 round one. Oh yeah so so it's uh it could it could it could get to like the top you know top eight top 16 or it loses in round one i think that's kind of the it's it's if it gets through it's going to just clean house through the next (laughs) but uh yeah i mean and then yeah all roads lead to 7v in that bracket um so or or squid 60 you never know listen like you know dream team Virginia number one team they got beat in the and they were a number one seed. I mean, I, I would be happy. I'd be happy if another seventy five percent won. I I, I think seventy five percent is the best. So you know, go, dude. We've it, always said, a- and we've we've seen you know, especially this past year, that the seventy five percent is the most versatile layout. You can do the most with it while maintaining yeah. like keys. You know, you've got of course you can do TKLs. You can do. Um, you know, the 1800, you can change things around. You can take the Efro away but with a 75%. It's more often than not, it's the same board, just slightly different, changed around, add things. Um, so it's definitely the most versatile. I think it's the most people can agree on. If Osiris and I, if Eric and I had to sit down and someone said, you have to build a board, it would be a 75. I think it's the one that we agree on the most of like, yeah, I like this. Like I, we, you know, it wouldn't be a 65. <laughs> <laughs> just, just get that out of the way. It would be a left, it would be a left USB mounted, uh, ty- uh, uh, 
left mounted USB 75%. It really does have, uh, does it all. So I want to talk about volume because your website one, I've got a bone to pick. So I have to list off all the stuff that you have oh, for no. sale. And Jesus Christ, it's getting a bit much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going through, I'm like, all right, I got to open the website. to just Because <laughs> we got so much shit. Uh, I love it, though. I love it. The fact that you have so much stuff available right now. The fact that to find things that I want, I have to go to the second page. That's awesome, man. Like, congrats <laughs> on just growing big enough and have being able to offer so much. You've got three key sets running right now and two keyboards, yeah. <laughs> and two keyboards. We do. Yeah. Four or five different sets of top tier switches, like PCBs, like you guys are crushing it. So, I mean, it all kind of follows, right? Like we want to be able, so, so we want to have PCBs for all of our brutal series. So like if people need replacements or, other people want to design boards and they want to use like an off the shelf PCB that they know will be available. Like whenever we're going to, we're going to keep stocking those, right? That's kind of the, the idea there. Um, so that's where a lot of the PCBs come from. And then for switches, it's just like, look, there's so many cool switches out there. Like you, you gotta, like, you know, give people the chance to, to get something that they like. And, and then with keyboards, uh, you know, we released 1200 satisfaction 75s and we're confident that we're going to be able to do the QC and, and shipping and fulfillment for all of those. Right. So picking up a, a keyboard group by that is, I, that's not normal, right? Doing 1200 is, is, is yeah, definitely not normal. Very but, abnormal in the hobby. But, but, you know, when we have to run a, you know, few keyboards, like doing a couple hundred units of a keyboard at this point is just like, we've done this a lot and we've done it before and we, and we think we're good at it now. So, so we think we can handle it, you know? Um, we have we have a team now, right? We have people helping us out in fulfillment, um, and you know, and we're continuing to expand that team and, and like you know hire new people. So, um, yeah, like all of these things have become kind of uh, possibilities because it's not just me or not just me and Anna. It's you know we're, we're building out a team now. We're building out an organization. You know, Mike has seven people. I mean, we're not there yet, but like that's that's what it takes. You know, so. Um, or, or unless you want to go crazy and have terrible weight, loss, which let's also let's get some Mexon horns. Let's get some Mexon horns for Anna, the other half of Canon keys, because honestly, like she's she, I, I, every time I hear him, I'm like, dude, like she's the reason Canon keys is <laughs> she, she is the under the underground secret of like why Canon keys is able to do so much. And I know with the newsletters and and the fulfillment and all that stuff, like, you know, let's shout out to the shout out to the other the other half of canon keys yeah and then um so yeah anna has been absolutely instrumental in like getting all of this off the ground and she I, I i think she still kind of takes point on like all the warehouse things like look okay these are the projects that are coming in this is what we need to do and all that kind of stuff um it's like a like kind of her responsibility to kind of get the team all on the same page and and, and ready to do the next thing Oh, oh, is this, is this Kobe? <gasps> Do we is have time? Kobe? Kobe? Is this a Kobe alert? Oh, there's Anna too. <laughs> hey, oh. there, he is. there he is. Uh, do we want to have, do we have three dogs on stream at once? Dude, three dogs? <laughs> let's get some, let's get three. Howie, come on. Come here. Oh, he's hey, like, buddy. Asleep, like, what the hell? We took him to the dog park, so he's just really fucking tired. Right now. <laughs> Puppy stream. Oh. So many dogs. Look at there. Oh, Kobe, look. look. See him. Do you remember Anubis? You used to be roommates with him, and he ate your dog food. <laughs> All the puppers. Puppy stream. All, All right, go back to sleep, bud. All right, Kobe, you can go. He went. He went to the dog park today, so he is. He's be he's fucking out. <laughs> he's like, I'm done. And we gave him a bath and took him to the dog park. Ooh, he's just he must be exhausted. He's, he's yeah, like, I'm done. I'm out. <laughs> Extra zoomies when he's slightly damp still at the dog oh, park. Oh yeah. Well, we we I let him out of the uh, the bathroom and he just ran in circles for like five minutes and then we were like, all right, let's go to the dog park and dry you off, get you out in the sun some, and just again. <laughs> <laughs> so the pet tax has been paid. Dude, there it is. There so. you go, chat. Now everyone's gonna everyone's gonna turn off the stream. They've got they've got the the appearance yeah. that they were looking for. Um, we made it. But I I do want to know. I'm interested. How how large is the team right now with uh, over there at Cannon Keys? So yeah, um, we have so there's Anna and myself, and then three other full timers. 
Wow. Dude, dude, yeah. Rats, man. Like, I'm so more, we need to make a clap emote apparently because it's just it's good, man. Fucking. But, but this is on. this is all 2021. Like yeah. it. Like this is the year where you know we need to like in order to do what we want to do, we need more people to help. So um, the folks who are full timers now in fulfillment, uh, you know, they've been helping out on like a contract or part time basis in 2020. Um, and then um, we hired uh, his name is Mark. He's great. Um, he's he's really good at kind of like the building out an organization side, and um, he's he's got strong marketing skills. So um, you know he's helping out in a bunch of different areas. So like we're we're still trying to hire like a customer support lead. Um, you know th that's monumental. Like we need we need this person. So like um, you know there's there's a lot of stuff that's happening behind the scenes. We want to give people like a great customer experience. Um, we we just want to have like we want to meet people's expectations and more. So mm -hmm. um, have, have you had the, the moment world. where you're, you take a step back and you look at everything and you're like, this is, this is real. Like this is actually happening. Like this is my life now. I, I think I have had, I have many, I've had many of those moments, <laughs> but at the same time, I feel like uh, we go so fast <laughs> at the same time too. It's just like, you know, just trying to get everything done. Um, it, it does take kind of like a kind of a lull to, to take a step back and like realize like, wow, man, man, Canon Key's getting big, you know, like mm -hmm. five people's big, you know, 2019 was just me. So it's yeah. An, it's an intense team, intense team. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we also have a couple other folks who are helping out on a part-time basis or contract basis right now too. So wow. it's five full-timers, but like, you know, there's others as well. So who come and contribute. That well, just congrats. impressive. Like it's, and it's been fun watching as as a community member it's been fun water I me mean, canakees was just the the weird site i went to because waves yeah. looked cool. <laughs> waves is there yep waves was there i was like all right whatever i mean it's like i hope this guy isn't a scammer and i hope i get this gmk set but Ooh. hey uh, we, we still sell i mean i think when waves was running all the only other thing we were selling were uh practice kits yeah yeah the practice kits. still going strong hey i, <laughs> I love the practice kits like we, we are going to continue to do practice kits i think it's a great way to enter the hobby so fantastic yeah. and, and, and it's it's just it's been fun it's been like 2021 i mean obviously we had some um, some ups and downs last year as in regards to the world but uh you know it showed a lot of growth for the hobby i think i mean, I mean uh, you know this hobby we talked about it a lot last year but this hobby is based off of extra income right it's based off of people who are it's not people who are you know scraping by it's from people, mm -hmm. you know a lot of the big money comes from like oh i have extra money to spend on keyboard not you know the, I, I don't i'm not happy with a 20 dollar keyboard so how was kind of traversing 2020 i mean I, I feel like 2020 exceeded all expectations like you know people were stuck at home tons of new people getting into the hobby like um we just saw like i think month after month we just had like great gmk numbers like you know higher higher numbers than ever like i think we had noel and then like the next month D deep navy broke that and then like in november we had hollyu which broke that again so like it's, it's it's crazy man like just just the way things are growing it's it's insane it's not something we expected at all yeah so yeah so we had you on december well this is before december of 1990 uh, or not 2019 1990 wow that would have been yeah before I, we were born um uh, <laughs> uh yeah december of 2019 so it's been over a year since we've had you all. wow um, yeah that's crazy and yeah i mean 20 i mean it, which by the way guys uh for those who are wondering why it's been so long we actually were all set to go <laughs> uh the tuesday after the satisfaction 75 v2 run uh if you missed earlier we talked about how it was a struggle <laughs> So you watch yeah. the VOD. Uh, it was a struggle. And I remember just getting a message from Upas being like, no, nope, not right now. <laughs> like, Sorry, guys. I just can't. No, no, no. Yeah. Like, just like, we get it. Yeah. Makes <laughs> like, sense. We get it. <laughs> Honestly, expected that sooner. <laughs> like, we were kind of, it's like, that's why we're even asking in the first place. So, um, but yeah, it's great. It, it doesn't feel like it was that long ago. I mean, we talked to you, we talked to you. You're, Busy man, I, I you know if I, I I say this with love, you're a hard man to get in contact. With. You're a busy guy. 
<laughs> I, dude, it, it, I feel like it's just always it's gotten worse. I feel like it's gotten a little bit better after I closed up my DMs. Mm -hmm. But like before I did that, it you'd wake up and be like, oh my gosh, like, there's just like a sea of, <laughs> of messages that are just waiting for me. And like, what do I do with all these? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, the I will say this is an actual conversation I had with my wife. Um, we were we were talking the other night at like ten thirty, and we were like getting in bed. And she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm having a business meeting. She's like at ten thirty at night. I'm like, babe, it's upas, all right. When it's full attention, we take his full yeah. attention. <laughs> uh, close DMs is the best. Yeah, it, I, I'm. I, we're fortunate. I don't, we don't get hit up nearly as much um, as we used to. I don't know about you. I don't get hit up as nearly as much. Not really. Every once in a while, I'll get someone. Um, more often than I've noticed, it's it's less questions and more people being like, "Hey, you talked about this, yeah. and I tried it, and I liked it. You know, thank you," which yeah. is always fun. Like I really That's enjoy awesome. that. Yeah. yeah, it's it's always it's it's definitely uh, definitely fun. I I I I when mentally released the video about Zykos, I got a few PMs that were like, "I didn't even know you made it." <laughs> <laughs> I was like. Like, thank. I mean, she's more popular for <laughs> with them than I am at this point. But, um, but no, and you know, uh, but I, I can imagine as a as a vendor just waking up to it just every single day because it, it 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 takes a toll. You know, yeah. having to it's like having to respond and be on. You know, and be you have you have you know, every time you're talking as upas of cannon keys. You're not just talking as just, you know, Hey, it's me. Like it's, it's, it's being on. So that can be, that can be difficult. The fact that you're, you're continuing to navigate it every single day. Like I, it's, I'm just, I'm so like stoked that you are, and you're the one that's running one of the best vendors in this hobby. I'm not saying that because we're sponsored by you. We're saying that because like, literally, if you look at all the websites up there, it's like, well, this guy's got a lot to offer and, at, at the time he had, we, we, he's, oh, thanks, he's able guys. to ship everything out like <laughs> when you do it for the right reasons yeah. like the fact that yeah. you're like I, I i still think about regularly like i went whenever all the satisfaction 75 round two stuff and people were pissed off i'm like we're talking about a man who saw someone make a post on reddit for a slot of one of his keyboards and then canceled <laughs> their order <laughs> like he cares about the people who want the board and the people who are going to enjoy the products that he makes he wants them to have it and he wants them to be able to get it. And it's, it's good. It, you know, we've talked about before people always ask, Oh, how, how is the community going to grow? And, and what's going to happen if it gets to a, a huge point where these large companies start trying to come in, you know, we're seeing it a little bit with glorious, but it's like, we want to build up the vendors that are in the hobby that are doing it for the love of the community and the love of the hobby, uh, because they're going to maintain that in some, in some sense. So we're excited that you're, uh, that you're 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 growing and that it's uh gotten as large as it has you know yeah i mean we're excited that we can and like we're we appreciate like everyone's support too you know like there's no way we could do it if the community didn't support us right yeah like it's and you know we say this about like the designers too right like look the designers who work with us the, you know content creator partners who work with us like it, it it takes everybody you know like we wouldn't be where we're at we're not for you know, all the people that we've worked with and, and partnered with. And, um, you know, it's, it, we've, we've just been really lucky and, and, and blessed that like, you know, the community has supported us and, and shown up in such a way. So, yeah, uh, never in a million, like basically never in a million years would I have expected to win like any sort of mech madness type of competition. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, yeah. So, uh, Duona actually asked about this. Uh, we haven't really talked about the new switches. You, you, you're releasing heat. I mean, a, a lot of it is JWK. So mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's and JWK has really just taken over the hobby by storm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's not JWK. Uh, it's a holy panda. Um, but you're releasing lots of switches and I really like this. I mean, I'm super, I'm, I'm excited to try the navies because I know, um, I think Osiris has tried them or at least a variant of them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so and blind assassin who I work with quite a bit really really likes them but also the the t1 the the dark ambers i mean if yeah. that like that has Not the potential here. to to knock to really like yeah there it is that has the potential to really fuck up my top four favorite switches <laughs> <laughs> 
It is, yeah. It's it's full nylon. Um, a lot of a lot of the switches, I guess, you know, like the navies and and the navies and the the raids, like raids. That was that was all AE boards, man. They they did the work there. Like, excuse me, they put in a, they put in a lot of time and effort to make those make those happen. And you know, from round one to round two, there or this is round one point five. There have been some marked improvements. Like I think round one, the the leaves pinged a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not saying it's completely gone in round two, but it's better. Um, or sorry, round one point five. It's round one point five, not round two yet. <laughs> so so round two is going to be even better. So so yeah. Um, we actually we actually have like yet another new switch, which I can show to you guys now. Mm-hmm. Um, it's this. It's from Texi. It's it's made out of their uh, like PME material blend. Um, and it, it's supposed to feel like a holy panda, like the stem is panda-like or halo-like. So, um, I, I think it's, it's pretty close. Just, just Not, off of that. The yeah. Quick, it sounds good. It's going to, it's going to sound different, but you know, it, it is what it is. These are going to come out soon too. Um, and yeah, I mean, we have a bunch of other, a bunch of other switches coming <laughs> still, like, you know, we got more plans. Yeah. It's just, you know, for a lot of these, the lead time's quite long. And you got to buy a whole bunch of them. Yeah, so. when you're buying twenty thousand switches, like yeah, yeah. Um, so it yeah, it's been fun to see. You know, we haven't seen Mike's kind of had the monopoly uh, over on on this side of the planet with switches. So it's nice to see the the switches get kind of broken up a little bit, and with JWK and the offerings there. So, I mean, our our perspective on switches is like. We just want people who are buying other things on the site to also be able to get switches, right? Um, when we first released switches, it was like, I want one good linear, one good tactile, and one good clicky. We, 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 just, we just put our first clicky up in 2021. So like yeah. the one good clicky took a little bit. Um, but yeah, like as you know, as, as we've grown, we've also been able to expand in the variety that we've offered. So, you know, uh, it's no longer just one of each. Um, and that's, that's, that's really nice. Yeah. It's nice to be able to be like, Hey, yeah, you can get all of this stuff for your keyboard from one place too. Cause that wasn't mm-hmm. always the case, you know, before Mike switches just from novel keys, yeah. <laughs> he gets to the keyboard from this and then PCB from there. Yeah. It was, yeah. Uh, like we want to be a one-stop shop, right? Like paying it, it sucks. It, it already kind of, you know, people are used to Amazon and Amazon prime and not having to pay shipping. So like, if they're going to pay shipping, hopefully they can at least get everything that they need. So, yeah. you know, that's kind of pay, pay one time. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, um, well, let's, let's dive into some questions. Uh, so guys hit at max. I've seen a lot of questions. Um, please hit at max on deck. It likes us be able to go search for them a lot easier in those questions. Uh, so feel free to ask us or uh, ask Upas, but my, um, I've got one I saw from Mr. Langlandia himself. Uh, the worst, I know it's probably the worst experience you've ever had working with a designer. Uh, <laughs> and what is your favorite luxury brand? <laughs> favorite luxury brand. Oh man, this is, this is a tough one. Um, I don't have, I don't know if I have a, a great answer to this question right now. Um, I don't, I don't think Yeezys are, are luxury. I, I'm looking at the chat. Yeah, I don't think Yeezys are luxury. Like, yeah, f- like, are they? Not really. Not, um, no. They're, they're luxury in the sneaker hobby. Yeah. But, but, not, but it's even not like... It depends on what it is, because it's not like a Dior Jordan 1. Right? They're not, yeah, yeah or, they're not like high fashion or anything. They're not like Margiela Gats or something, you know, yeah. like, I don't know. Ah, uh, man. Yeah, I don't... I, Jeff, I don't have one. I don't have a single favorite luxury brand. Give sure. give me like a category and I'll tell you what I like in that category. What if that works? What okay, if that's the case, then what what shoes are you looking for? What are you what are you trying to get here in the next in the next month? Dude. In the next feels. month? Oh man. I Hyper I, I really want okay, so they they ran um the hospital blue uh, Yeezy seven hundreds and I missed out on those. I think those were like easy to get too. But that's something that I uh I want, and if they ever rerun them, I'll, I'll get them. I don't want to play. I don't want to go on a, on StockX though. Yeah, it's yeah. Yeah, it's it's tough on you know the but the the Yeezy three fifties are doing better on StockX. Now that they are. I mean, because they're releasing a ton of them. I yeah. I, I love three fifties too. I think they're so comfortable. And then I like three eighties are also super super comfortable. I don't like the way they look. Looks not for everybody. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, so, and I have, I have one personal question. Uh, what is your favorite key set running this month on your store? And why is it EPBT aesthetic, which you can get for $79 at a base kit? <laughs> so, um, oh man, oh man, there's, there's no, there's no loopholes with this one, right? <laughs> um, I, I like, uh. DSA Est Fuji. There you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah I little, made it. Little blend. DSA, little blend. Est Fuji. You take the you take the mods and take the alphas and then maybe a space bar kit. I get it. I think yeah. they. I think every single one of the sets has something cool going for it. Like yeah, the DSA set, like has this whole like the way it's it's manufactured is just really cool. And uh, I had a chance to see the samples before I sent them out to the designers, and they're they turned out really nice like I, I think they've posted um i think they've posted sample photos like those are legit samples and they turned out great and then ep epbt aesthetic um i was a little bummed it's not cat but but <laughs> i love the colors and I, I i love i love cat i really like the colors um just like the arizona iced tea stuff and um i, I think the mods like the custom mods too because it is a, a die subset those are pretty cool as well. So that's not something you can get otherwise. And then um, Fuji is just like, you know, gray muted. It's it's kind of nice, like that that pink coming in, um, a little bit of the blue. I think it's going to look great on a navy keyboard. So yeah, that's always <laughs> always always one of the things I like about key sets. So um, so yeah, I think they all got something great going for them. Hey, there's the PR. He's learning. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I know. I am very. Dude, you just gave me an opportunity to shill every single one, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it. <laughs> I'm I'm very appreciative. We we love DD Decline. He's the the fourth member He's of Mex on deck, and Langlandy is the third. So appreciative that you're able to get it. I know that he kind of feels like he had to jump through hoops in order to figure out how to make it happen. So it's awesome that it's available. Um, so check out EPBT Aesthetic as well as the other two sets if you're into dsa you want a gmk mm -hmm. set it's got all three running over at canakeys.com also another quick plug uh with EB epbt aesthetic we're working with a u.s based company that's making the keycaps in the u.s called Cerro foundry they're doing the like the rama cap style thing uh aluminum keycap um i think it's gonna be laser etched so Ooh, that's cool that'll be fun that'll be yeah. really fun we got a question uh so we had a kind of, I guess, joke question by I or either I or L T T Store ninety nine. Who's your favorite CK regular slash CK one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a better question for Anna because she watches the CK regular streams more than I do. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm uh, I'm punting on that one. Uh, you're gonna have to ask Anna, and she and she can deflect. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. Um, JJW. KB asks, what do you think of the future of custom keyboards? Last year was a huge influx of new audiences. Uh, do you think things will slow down and dwindle or do you think it will continue to grow? Um, and what do you think about the future of prices? Well, I, I hope it continues to grow because, you know, the more people in the hobby, the more, you know, niche things can get addressed, right? Like the more, the more people who like 40s, 40% keyboards, the more 40% keyboards can run things that can fit people's tastes more acutely. Um, I think it's only a good thing, right? Um, there's there's like this notion of like a on the internet of like this eternal September, right? Where like oh everything was better back in September, and after that one September everything was worse. Like as people come in, the community is going to change a bit, right? And and, and th that's a fact of life, right? But at, at the end of the day, I, I do think it's a good thing uh, the community growing. It, it just means there's going to be more variety, more options um, in terms of prices. Um, you know, if, if we're able to scale, hopefully prices can go down. I mean, we're hitting higher scales now, but you know, on the flip side, aluminum price has gone up and, and the yuan has gone up compared to the dollar compared to like a couple of years ago. So like, um, there's a whole bunch of factors, right? Um, but in general, as you have more people in the community and can reach higher economies of scale, prices should go down. Um, at least for the things that are like, you know, widely widely available or like widely wanted um for the niche things like i think those become feasible where maybe today they're not as feasible so mm -hmm. i think it's only a good thing yeah i think uh we've we've talked about it before but um 
we'll see the hobby start kind of splintering in a couple different, you know, you'll have your high ends and you'll have the, you know, we'll have the, it will be a little more mainstream, which while a lot of people might hate that term or just hate that idea, uh, we want things to be mainstream. We want people to, to continue to make boards like the wrecked and the brutal and the savage and, um, the why am I going blank on the serious? Thank you. The serious, uh, and like just all these boards the the Bauer Light, the the Kara, the NK65, these are all moves to make the hobby more mainstream so that it's more acceptable and more easy to get into. And then you can kind of leave the nicer, super higher end boards for people who want to go that much deeper, right? Some people, there are for every person that goes, I want to own 15 keyboards, there's probably someone who goes, I'm good with just one. So, which is yeah. weird to think about because, you know, like, uh, I'm not good with just one, but. <laughs> um, we've got two. I'll combine these. So, because they're both about future products um, being available. Uh, SAT extras of SAT 75 knobs. And then any plans to offer the stacked 65 as a case only rather than the full kit. We will have extras of all Satisfaction 75 related things uh, after the group by ships. And then for uh, the stack 65, it's, it's something we considered, but we're probably ultimately not going to do. Um, part of the reason we're able to do like uh, brutal, like the practice line plus the stack line plus the savage line is because with all of them together, we're buying a bunch of PCBs and that drives the price down. Um, especially recently. So I don't know if, I, if anyone's aware, but Micro microcontroller prices have been like shooting up through the roof. So like, um, that's that's been something that we've kind of been trying to deal with and and, and manage our ways around. Um, but yeah, like maybe in the future, but probably not anytime soon. So like future being like twenty twenty two at the earliest, probably. Um, yeah, it, it just. Just makes more sense. And also one of the last things I want is someone to buy a stack 65 kit and then realize, oh, I was supposed to buy a PCB also, and then like not have it there. So, you know, th there are ways you can try to address that by like, you know, alerting them or or putting in the product description. But at the same time, like some people don't like to read and you know, it's it's just more kind of barriers. So just easier this way to, you know, offer it as a kit and it's like this is what you need. So that's yep. that's our take on that. Uh, we got another question from Anaraki that says, uh, is Upas thinking about designing a cat set? Um, Are you going to dip your toes in designing cat? So I had I had an idea for a cat set, but I, you know, given the state of the queue, I'm, I'm probably going to hold off on that. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's completely out of the question in the future, but uh, probably not soon. You know, probably. I, I I got some other projects on my plate, so so that's kind of what's up. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Uh, Kimchi Jody Boy says, "Not a question. Just wanted to say thanks to Upas for putting up with all the BS from dumb people in the community. I will fight anyone who is mean <laughs> to Cannon Keys. Also, go by EPBT Aesthetic. So, thanks, Kimchi. <laughs> thanks, Kimchi Jody Boy. <laughs> <laughs> I love." I love hanging, hanging Dilo. Uh, thanks, Mex on Deck, for inviting Upas. I always thought Upas is a middle-aged guy. I'm totally wrong. <laughs> 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 Honestly, it wasn't. We, you know, we when it comes to the people, especially the people that we're sponsored and partnered with, it's it's not. It's never. We're always planning, you know, a couple months ahead of like, okay, when are we going to bring them back on? Because you know, it's 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 things change. I mean, things change in this hobby every six months, every two months. So it's it's. We, you, this will not be the last time Upas is on this channel. No, I'll be back. Yeah, for sure. Maybe just not like the the week after a big release. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we just won't plan. Or we'll do well, it right well, before the big release. Well, hopefully. Hopefully. Um, hopefully we can come on with that with a happy. We can do it. Yeah, we can do it right after a big release and not have any issues, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> hopefully all the big releases go smoothly. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, should, what do you, what are, what do you see? Canon keys looking like in five years that's dude questions. that's a that's a great question and it's a question i probably have to answer uh for myself uh definitely bigger <laughs> than we are now <laughs> so 
So yeah, we're, de we're definitely trying to scale. Um, we're, you know, who knows what the future holds? I, you know, if we can just have things that address kind of like every market seg segment, including like, you know, entry level people just getting the hobby, people who want to really have like a DIY aspect and like solder together a full kit, the people who just want something to like buy it and put their switches in and have a hot swap keyboard. You know, I, I want to address like everybody. I want to have some for everybody. That's mm -hmm. kind of the goal. Um, high end, middle end, low end entry, DIY, whatever. Right. We, we kind of want to do it all, but um, in order to get there, we, we do need to like, you know, be strategic on what we focus on. So that's, that's kind of the goal. It, it would be nice to also like be large enough to think about like, um, how do we make shipping cheaper for everybody? You know, yeah. like some of these things that you can do when you're at that sort of scale. So, so yeah. Uh, so we got got a couple questions related to this. Are you still doing, I know last time we had checked in, you were still working your main job on top yep. of Kanakis. So what's, if you don't mind us asking, what's that status? Yes. Like? Uh, still working my, still working my nine to five, you know, uh, <laughs> I, insane. Here's, <laughs> here's the thing. I, I, yeah, I feel like I have two full-time jobs, right? Like Kanakis, uh, I am easily spending at least 40 hours a week on Kanakis. Uh, most weeks it's, it's much, it's, it's more. So um, I have my day job. Uh, I like my day job. I, I learn at my day job and that's kind of why I'm there. Um, you know, a lot of the skills that I'm picking up my day job, I can also use to kind of apply to you know, how to, how to grow Canon keys or, you know, how to, how to hire people and like, you know, how, how to do all that kind of stuff. So, um, it, it is, it does kind of feed into that. Um, but, but yeah, for, for the near future, definitely going to still be doing both. Um, who knows what that's going to look like in the future, but you know, who knows? Dang. That's crazy, yeah. man. Can't imagine that. I can't imagine having two. I mean, obviously, you know, we stream, we don't stream a ton, you know, we're streaming, you know, we spend what, six, seven hours a week. Yeah. On live. Yeah. Streaming live six, seven hours, probably eight to nine hours of mechs on deck work a week. I couldn't imagine. Does that include your streaming time? Like, I, I feel like getting everything set up for streaming is, is probably a lot we, of work. It's, I think it took a lot. It took a lot of work. But now it's it's way more streamlined to where it's right. we, we we each have for for those ever wondering we each have a part that we each play into that part. So like we'll we'll each bring something to, like I am bad at OBS and setting everything up and doing that and like on the fly. That's Osiris. That's all Eric. What I do is I will set up interviews with people. I usually reach out to people. And um, I, I get a lot of help from Lang Landy on this, so shout out to him, but coming up with topics to talk about on the week so that all Eric has to do is sit down and focus on, okay, how can we make everything look as good as possible and feel as good as possible? And, and then on top of that, setting up builds. And it's, I mean, it's a lot of work. And then, you know, mm -hmm. keeping me from saying stupid shit. So, <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> I feel like, you know, with, with streaming and also like with being a vendor, like there's a lot that goes into it that people just don't necessarily realize. Like it, it is a lot of work. Like it's, 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 I wouldn't, I would never call any, anything easy. So yeah. well, and we're, we're about who should we announce it like right now? Sure. All right. So we're, we're about to hit our two year anniversary. We've talked about this with Upas. Hey. So thank you. Um, but I think a part of that goes into learning through our mistakes over two years of recording and streaming. Um, but uh, we are having our anniversary stream is coming up. So our technical anniversary, our first YouTube video was posted April 2nd of 2019. We'll be having an anniversary stream on April 3rd. Um, we, the details have not all been released. We'll probably start at noon. It's not going to be a 24 hour stream because jobs and it's it's mental just difficult <laughs> Ment <laughs> mentally and it's it's tough to do 24 hour streams but we have shit tons of giveaways we're going to see giveaways from from the man up 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 here <laughs> he's got some stuff to give away so april 3rd you want to throw it on your calendars lang landia will be joining us at some point during that time lots of people will be joining us we're going to be building some cool stuff from some cool vendors mm -hmm. so excited yeah. and and you know maybe Maybe, maybe it looks, maybe it looks a little, at least, yeah, that's, that's the thing is, is that, uh, yeah, well, it might look a little different stream. It might look a little different. I, you know, Ooh. I like to, to think of it almost as like, 
we did a big change at our 24 hour stream last year with the way the stream looked. Um, that was like season one into like season two. And now we're getting into season three of, uh, of the, the channel. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have uh, a lot of stuff to give away. So come hang out with us yeah, on the like, third. Lots of cool congrats stuff. on two years, guys. It's, so Thank you. it's, it's yeah. weird. It doesn't feel like it, but then it totally feels like dude. It. Yes. Well, and it feels like it even more so when I go back and because we did this Just, last year, I go back and watch the first videos that we did. I'm like, these are awful. These are yeah, so tough. bad. <laughs> Even just looking at like, the, cause like the, the camera quality on mine, mm-hmm. on my end of, of that, my audio is, I mean, Osiris has had a pretty solid setup from, from day one, but, um, but even just looking at like the layouts just look goofy and off and all that. So we have, you know, we wanted to, uh, not not that we're bored with it, but we're like, let's let's change it up. Let's you know, Osiris and I are never the person to to you know remain stagnant. Let's change it up. We've we've our our content has changed com- like almost entirely uh, since day one. So it's it's been a lot of fun. Um, but let's go through some of these other questions. Uh, let's see, GMK Rudy round two win. Uh, you got to ask Walker and Warren. There it is. Uh, let's see, please. Uh, or someone said, why do you do, uh, all your, your big sales on the weekend? Um, we think, well, first we, uh, you know, we don't always open things on weekends. Uh, most of the time for, for like keyboards, it's on the weekends. It's just, most people have better availability during the weekends, right? For um, sure. it would, it would certainly be easier for us to not have to do support tickets on weekends, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> that comes with the territory. So, uh, you know, because with every big drop, there's always a, a huge influx of support tickets. Uh, you know, people who want to add things to their orders or order the wrong thing, etc. So, um, in terms of the timing, like we we typically do 11 a.m. Eastern on weekends. Um, 11 a.m. Eastern on on weekends is it, it hits most time zones pretty well. So if someone's outside the U.S., they can kind of um, participate if they really want to. Um, and it's 8 a.m. on the West Coast, which is, yeah, it's a little early, but, like, it's, it's not that early. But if you're into shoes, yeah. you're already used to it, yeah. right? Dude, if, if you're into shoes, you I was waking up at, like, 4 in the morning for some of these, like, website <laughs> raffles. Yeah. So, like, you know. You, you live on the West Coast. Like, you should be used to it by now, all right? It's NFL yeah. games start at 10 a.m. Like, yeah. It, it, yeah <laughs> it, it can get rough for Hawaii. I, 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 I do understand that. That's it's, it's a bit early there, but. That's hard to. Yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's hard, hard to, to make for. everyone happy. Listen, yeah, that's, that's one state. All right, I'm sorry, the state <laughs> of Hawaii. It's tough, dude. Uh, market opens at six thirty a.m. PST. There it is. Um, so let's. See, I'm trying to make sure I hit all the ones that at least pinged us. Any chance for a forty percent brutalist series board? Uh, maybe. I I don't have one designed right now, but I wouldn't ever write it off. It could happen. There we yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, uh, I think that's it. I, think I that, looked at them. That's all. The, that's all the ones that we got. So, uh, well, I'm going to change up one of our last two questions. Okay. For us, this is going to be specifically for vendors. So I'll do I'll do the 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 first question. We usually end with two. the The usual is what's your favorite and least favorite part. But let's change it up for vendors. Um, uh, Goose Lounge. Well, I guess. Well, let's ask. Let's answer these last two real quick. Though. Okay. Any high end. TKLs coming to CK. I mean, we did just have one sort of, but any more um, coming soon? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is always maybe, right? Like, <laughs> I don't know. We don't want to reveal too much of our uh, of our our roadmap, I guess. So maybe, yeah. yeah. So and then uh, greetings on behalf of the Mexican Lat Latam, or is that Latin? I don't Latam. A Latin American. Yeah. Latin American. Okay, thank yeah. you. All right, sorry. I've never okay. seen that uh, I, <laughs> that term before, um, or that way of saying that term. Community, to all of you guys, best of regards to Upas and everyone at Canon Keys already in four keycap sets, group, key, key, keycap set group buys and counting. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Hell yeah. So, what is your best and worst day as a vendor? That's that's a really that's a really good uh good question. Um 
Worst day is probably the satisfaction round two <laughs> drop day. <laughs> I knew that uh, one was coming. I, mean, I knew cares. that was, I kind of figured that was. The- <laughs> I mean, a- any day you get like tons of angry messages, including a death threat and, and some like other, other messages this is not, not fun. Um, in terms of best day, uh, you know, like I would love to say, oh, it was the day when we found out Satisfaction won Mac Madness, but I, I don't think that's it. You know, I, I think for me, the best day was probably when we got our first round of Satisfaction 75s in, and it was like, wow, this is this is happening, and like we're, we're shipping these out to people, and it's like, you know, this is um, it, it's really going to happen. Um, I, I don't, I don't know if it was like a single best day there, but like the whole process was was yeah. fun. Like we had this like. 200 250 square foot little like office we were working out of and like um like uh, otani shaw came to like help qc things and like you know we we're all kind of packed in this one room and like our tables weren't like standing height yet so like our backs would hurt after we'd like qc and everything but just like looking back at that and like all the things that we've like learned since then it's it's kind of nostalgic in a little way and just just fulfilling that group by um had its ups and downs but uh, at the end, once it was all shipped, that was a great feeling and probably like our, our best day, at least so far. Mm-hmm. Who knows what happens? I mean, yeah. this is all so yeah. far. And hopefully yeah. that's the worst day you will ever have. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> hopefully that's that's forever. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, I, I, I do not want that again, for sure. And, and we're going to do our best to avoid, you know, making mistakes like that again, too. We, we definitely learned a lot again. So for sure. And then yeah. the last question. The office or parks and recreation? Still parks and rec. All right. All so, right. I mean, I I feel like maybe since the last time I've tried to watch The Office again, and there are just moments that are just like too too awkward for me. You know what I mean? <laughs> like Scott, it's, just, it's just too there's much. No ep- there's no episode of Parks and Rec that I refuse to watch. There is one episode of <laughs> The Office that I refuse to watch. So, so Parks and Rec, I don't know. It, it feels like a little... But both shows are kind of lighthearted, but Parks and Rec is like, I don't know. It's like goofier. I, yeah. I don't know how to describe it. So, it doesn't yeah. take itself as, as... I mean, neither of them take themselves yeah. as seriously, but it's they. it doesn't take it even further as serious. Yeah, so. The Office definitely tries to like take things way further than it necessarily needs to whereas parks and rec kind of sits in like it's it's little box and then it kind of branches out every once in a while but for the most part it's just like you know what you're getting in for whereas uh scott's tots kind of you're like oof, it's, oof. Oh. <laughs> man and so that scott's tots is and whoever said dinner party no dinner party is one is of the, the best, best <laughs> is the best episode of television ever <laughs> like that is it's just it's so perfect um but guys uh thank you thank thank mr upas thank thank Yo, all thanks, the thanks for having me back on guys of, of course I'm, i was it. super glad whenever you hit us up and you're like let's you know i was like oh let's do this again uh super happy very very excited uh to get this interview going this week so um but guys check out we haven't you know we haven't done the sponsor role my apologies you know it's like one let's start off with can keys Let's list off all of the things. Let me see if I can do this without looking at, <laughs> at the screen. So we've got EPBT Aesthetic for a $79 base kit. We've got GMK Fuji. We've got D- DSA 1930. I don't know the prices on either of those. I'm sorry. I just know that EPBT Aesthetic is a $79 base kit. <laughs> uh, we've got... <clears throat> okay, nope. I forgot the keyboards. <laughs> Cornelius like the- and Angel. The Cornelius nice. and Angel. So there you go. We got those two. We've got Dark Ambers, Navies, uh, ra- Raids. Raids. Uh, raids. I don't even know how to pronounce it properly. So. <laughs> raids. <laughs> yeah. uh, you've, we've still got Seal Switches. Uh, do you have Lavenders in stock? Uh, we restocked on Lavenders, yeah. Okay, there, there you go, which honestly might be the best, like one of the best linear switches that I have at least typed one switch on. Um, but <laughs> Raid Shadow Legends, absolutely as well as just so much more stuff, the ANSI V2 uh, and just all this awesome stuff on there. So go check out canakeys.com slash mechs on deck using that specific link does give us a kickback and it helps us continue to run the channel. We've got OmniType running GMK Norse right now. So if you like that Viking set with Viking sub legends and one of the coolest Rama caps we've seen, uh, be sure to check that out over at Omni, uh, mechs on deck to Omnitype. And then uh, Max on deck. Project. Link. Project. Uh, Project keyboards. They've got GMK Astral running right now. Uh, so if you like that really desaturated blue set, it's a really really clean set. Uh, very excited to see that one come out. 
And then also our awesome partners. We got Smith and Rune. The Iron 180 is in production, uh, and those extras will be out. We also got the Iron 165 Standard Edition in production right now. Uh, so those extras will also be coming. But if if you need something to look at, if you need that badge to look at, they've also got awesome merch on there. So be sure to check that out. Zap Cables, you can go buy a bumper, which is this board right here. Um, on there right now he makes some of the best cables in the hobby he's also got amazing desk mats and a really cool like different they're they're not the usual desk mat so it's very nice and, and different uh so be sure to check them out as well as type beast you can go to type bea.st for the best newsletter in this hobby uh that in regards to giving you information about what's going on in the hobby uh, as well as he's running mech madness 2021 so x exclamation point mm 21 uh go fill out your brackets you only have about a week left before that closes up and we start going on Mech Madness. So be sure to get that. Lots of cool prizes. Uh, we've got the, one of the prizes right here. Third place That's for right. key, key is a key keyboards. I think it's, or no, key sets. It's key, key sets. sets. Key sets. So third place key set, get a wrecked 1800 built by us. Like it's, it's going to be with lavender switches that we've been talking right, about yeah. all night. So uh, thank you to all of our sponsors. Go check out those links, you know, bookmark them if you can. Yeah appreciate it and then of course uh, we'll be back here again at noon central time on saturday i'm going to be building or rebuilding my iron 165 uh i'm changing out some stabs messing around with it so i'm going to be doing that so come hang out on, at noon and again upas thank you so much for joining us tonight it's been a, a pleasure yeah it's always fun to come on so thanks guys absolutely absolutely uh upas you see anybody you would like us to raid? Ooh. Oh man, uh, I don't. Yeah, like no, no one I'm following is is online right now. So <laughs> um, unfortunately, I don't so have any. Uh... I'll make a suggestion. Doctor Huru just started streaming. He's been streaming live for seven minutes, and he is building a devastating TKL. Oh, he's he's on my recommended. So I think that's, there it is. I think that's it. all right, yeah. Doctor Huru. It is. Let's let's go ahead. Let's hit them with the mechs on horns, guys. We've been throwing that out a bunch today. And I, for whatever reason, it's not popping up as an emote. Okay. But guys, hit them with the mechs on horn. Thank you, Upas. Guys, check out Cannon Keys if you have not already. They have awesome stuff. And again, Upas, thank you for joining us. Good luck in 2021. We'll have you back on in 2021. It will not be as long as it was last time. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah, maybe, maybe like later this year. Yeah, later this year would be great. So, Absolutely. Absolutely. next week, we'll see you then. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same time next week. Let's just do it. Same time do next week. Easy. Uh, so, but guys, thank you as always. Check us out. Uh, check uh, Eric out and on noon and buy a switch tester.